on this episode of The Chris David Show. Kelly writes, I'm going to cut straight to the chase. My man is too small. That's just how I feel. Damn, she want earth, wind, and fire. She need all the elements. You're affecting your credit for a big booty. At 21 years old, it's going to take you a minute to pay that off. That's definitely a red flag. Men are very visual creatures. But that's in no way saying or, you know, even assuming that he could even handle a big booty. He might not even be ready for all that. It's time to bless and release. How about you start like in Jalen Hurts and, and DK Metcalf's picks? You have your whole life to get a fatty. I He just, oh, I just want to deck this dude. I don't see an issue with having a foot fetish unless you're leaving out a significant part of the story. Um, so like, have you done anything that was disrespectful to your wife involving your fetish? Um, are you entertaining other people's feet? A little hot sauce or a little habanero on the side may help with getting an erection. So this makes them one of the best foods for erectile dysfunction. I'm glad we were able to open you up to a whole new world. I don't know what's in that plant, but I'm going to just say this. Whatever's in that plant, we need to send it to Kelly so she can rub it on her man's... is part mind but part body so we're obviously using our body for sex but it's all in your mind because you can have every intention of going home and putting it down on your partner right but if somebody cuts you off in traffic or you had a bad day you just can't get your mind right you know you got bills to or anything like that your body isn't going to work with you coach tony welcome back the people can't get enough of these advice shows, and we can't get enough of doing it. I'm happy to be back. <laughs> and yes, I am so enjoying these questions. So thank you for having me. Anytime. And you're, you know, a friend to the show, like you are a mainstay. So listen, Tony, everyone's been asking about Hanif, though. <laughs> Women and men. Okay. But but before we get started, let everyone know how they can contact you. I have two websites. My first website is um, regarding my sexuality coaching. It has a little bit of bedroom candy, my YouTube, all of my contact social media. So that is the Kitty Chronicles.co. Uh, if you want to get straight into the toys, my bedroom candy website is www.bkparties.com slash 6109. What I notice is if you take a little too long checking out, it probably will ask you for the consultant ID again. So just remember consultant ID 6109. And then you can also find me on Instagram, bedroom candy underscore by Tony. Okay. So the first question. First question is actually uh, one that me and my guys on the men's panel episode, we talked about that. And if you guys haven't seen it, I don't know why you wouldn't have. Check it out. But this comes from Anonymous. Anonymous is 22 and she's from New York. Anonymous writes, I really don't know how to say this, but I've been dealing with this guy from my job that I really liked a lot. We've been on dates and he's met my friends and family. After we had sex, he turned on the lights unexpectedly and kept gazing at it. I asked him what he saw or if something was wrong. He asked me if I'd ever been in an accident or something. And I asked what kind of accident and told him, just get to the point. He said, how come I'm one color and my girl is darker? You know, Tony, mother, all I have to say for this is just like mother of misericordia and mercy health plan. Like I just, I, he just, oh, I just want to deck this dude. I told him everyone is the same isn't the same color all over and that our nipples usually tell what color we are down there. He laughed and said, but you, you are light. I just didn't expect it to be so ugly. I cried for the first time ever after sex. I've never been hurt by someone I cared about before. Now, everything is awkward because we haven't spoken since that day and we work together. What should I do? And Tony, I really want to deck him straight in the fucking nuts. Like, I'm serious. Oh, and she did write back um, from last week. He is black. 
Okay. But Tony, what in the world? So unless you're prepared to leave a job, unfortunately, you have to deal with it. Um, you know, this is what happens when we have sex with a coworker. And the only thing is we don't realize this until it's too late. Fun fact, it happens to all of us or a lot of us. Um, where we have sex with a coworker, or we're involved in a, with a coworker, and then you know things don't go well, and now it's like, okay, now what do I do? Um, and this it's just unfortunately one of those things that you have to deal with and be strong about it, or look for a new job. Period. Um, as far as the comment goes about your coloring, trust. There's definitely going to be a day that you find a man who can't stop looking at it, and. <laughs> That's going to be the one that, you know, loves the way you look, love the way it feels, love the way it smells. Um, it's just that it wasn't your coworker. He's just not the one. So as far as that goes, you know, just forget about that. Um, that was an immature comment from your coworker. Um, and he obviously is not experienced with seeing a multitude of vaginas. Um, but I will say as far as the discomfort goes of working with him, that's just such an unfortunate thing that it's like one of those repercussions of, what do they say, uh, where you're eating? Uh, I don't know, there's a saying, but basically you don't need to be having sex with someone. That oh, no, I know that one. <laughs> I say, you don't, Tony, listen, I have a cuss bank this year. Don't shit me. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, yeah. lesson learned to you, Anonymous. Uh, you know, un unfortunately, you can't turn back the hands of time. But just, you know, this is a lesson learned. Um, try to look for, you know, even if you don't want to leave the company, maybe I don't know how big your organization is, but maybe you can try to find um, a position in another department or, you know, something like that. Otherwise, you just have to, you know, suck it up and see him on a regular basis. So I did a men's panel. <clears throat> and a few of these we did on the panel. And um, my guy, Kai, he said, you know, these young men don't know what real women look like. They're so used to seeing pornography vaginas, pornography breasts, Instagram breasts, BBLs, all of that. And they don't really know what to do when they see a real person. Exactly. You know? And I'll just repeat what I said, you know, on the panel show, um, Anonymous, if he doesn't love you for who you are, he doesn't love you. Don't compromise your comfort. You don't need to change yourself for anyone. And listen, for fuck's sake, just please stop dating people at work. That shit <laughs> never ends well. Like, just, that. <laughs> just stop. Just, but I'm sorry, y'all. And Tony, I, I got to tell you about the cussing. Because somebody okay. said I have a cussing mouth, okay? So... I've been good. Well, I really haven't been that good. I've been good. I've been okay so far. Like I slipped up on the panel. Um, so like on the panel, I got I probably like up like eight hundred bucks or maybe more than that. I think <laughs> it's maybe like over a thousand now. But um, I'm gonna watch my mouth today in front of our clinical certified sexuality, Mrs. Tony Drumwhite Antoine. We have a follow up though. We have a response from one of our past caller star. Now, Star wrote in last season because a fiancé came home from prison with speed bumps on the shaft of his penis. And you can catch Tony's advice for Star on our previous Talk Like Sex uh, Q&A episode. And all that information is up in the description, as well as on chrisdavidshow.com. There's something right here, uh, too. Now, Star is 25, and she's from Brooklyn. Star writes, Dear Mrs. Tony and Mr. Chris... I love how Star writes. Like, she... Star, you know what, Star? I want one day, Star. I just want to see your handwriting because in my mind, Star <laughs> just has like big loops and curls, and she put hearts on top of her eyes and everything. But anyway, this is Star from Brooklyn. Um, Tony, you know what? Though every time I read Star stuff from Star, I think of that record. Do you remember that song? What's up, Star? I want to get to know who you are. Let's have drinks at the bar. Do you remember that? Vaguely. Yeah, it was. Uh, her name was uh, Sugar Tea. Um, also known as Sweet Tea. She was a, a rapper. I remember Sweet Tea. Yeah, Sweet Tea and Sugar Tea are the same same person. But, okay. um, but anyway, anyway, Star says, you guys helped me with my situation with my boyfriend, Kyle. I'm so happy you took my question. I hope everyone had a safe summer and is doing okay. Well, me and Kyle are no longer together. We broke up shortly before the episode came on in July. It was actually July 4th. I caught him texting other chicks and he tried to play me like he wasn't, but I saw everything in his phone. 
He was trying to go watch the fireworks with some random girl. And then he was texting different girls, asking them the same thing. I'm glad I'm not messing with him anymore, even though he'd still be texting me up and apologizing. He saw the show and said he was sorry for doing that speed bump operation behind my back, but I still don't care. I don't want to be with a cheater. I'm in love with myself more, and my comfort comes first. She learned something. Yes. Thanks for your great <laughs> advice, Mrs. Tony, and I will be buying some of those toys, love, star. And then she writes, P.S. Mr. Chris, I know you're going to make fun of me for how I write it. <laughs> can't help it. I hope you put this in your show because I'll be watching Cutie. Oh, star. Tony, <laughs> take it away. Yes, and I, the only thing to add, you know, the update is she broke up with her boyfriend, but the only thing is, you know, Star, you're 25 years old. You have the rest of your 20s to live. Um, you live in one of the best cities in the world. Just date around, have fun, you know, explore, get to know yourself, who you are, what you like. We know you don't like the speed bumps. Um but yeah, you know, it sounds like you're in the right direction. Um, it sounds like you're comfortable talking about, um, you know, what you don't like, or at least getting advice about it. So I would just say, you know, Star, just go for it. Um, just live the best, you know, your best life in your 20s. I know I remember my 20s. I had like the best time in my 20s. And even into my 30s, my 30s were even better. So it's only going to go up, Star. I was there. I remember Tony's 30s also. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, I'm I'm only 21. What am I saying? No, I'm <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm so glad that she listened and she took your advice because we both know in our personal lives so many times you give people advice and they don't listen, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's like, well, what are you asking for? And Star, I just want to say, you know, thank you for watching. And, and we here at the Chris David Show want to congratulate you for making a very wise decision. So continue to love, value, and invest in yourself. Don't invest in anyone who doesn't give you interest. And like Coach Tony says, your comfort comes first. Now, she also says they didn't stop making dick when they made his. <laughs> so I'm glad you took her advice and you realized your potential. And you know, Tony, Star, I didn't send you this when I sent you the letter, but she said, she sent me this long message. And she said when she would go up to visit him at the prison, other girls' names was on that list. Mm -hmm. And some of them were putting money on the books, but she ignored it. And I'm glad that she listened to some advice, you know, and also she knew we would blast her if she didn't. Right. So, okay. Okay, Tony. You ready for this next question? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Here we go. Kelly writes, I'm going to cut straight to the chase. My man's dick is too small. My ex was 9.5, almost 10, and I missed that full feeling. I'm going to need him to grow some more penis or something because his little 8.5 ain't it. I know y'all going to call me a size queen or whatever, but that's just how I feel. <laughs> now, Tony, before we get into Kelly's question or statement or whatever, because it's like she's talking at us. I meant to tell you this when, we, when I texted you the other day when we was talking. So when I was reading that, somebody was like glancing over my shoulder while I was reading her, you know, her email. And all they saw was like the, the sizes, like they saw the numbers. Mm -hmm. And then she put like eggplants in, in, in the message. <laughs> and they said, well, damn, she want earth, wind, and fire. She need all the elements. I was like, <laughs> But Tony, take it away. So Kelly Babes, <laughs> stop it, okay? Um, a few things, and, and I'm going to demonstrate, but just I'm being a little, um, I'm multitasking, but let yes. me just first, yes. I'm going to pull out a couple of things. First, my handy dandy, I keep a, a, a tape measure next to my desk. Why? I don't know. But this is nine and a half inches, but let me take it a step further, actually. Let me do something else first. We have a toy called Vitamin D+. Plus. And vitamin D plus is about 9.8 inches. This is vitamin D plus. Look at that. Look at that. It's bigger than my head, right? So technically, I just want to say this. Technically, size doesn't need to matter. 
Oops, <laughs> this is all in the town. I mean, I'm this point. It's okay. It's Size okay. doesn't need to matter. The G spot, believe it or not, is in the first two to three inches of the vagina. Um, so let's say, for instance, if your partner's trying to give you a G spot orgasm, it's the equivalent of you lying on your back, their palm up doing the come here finger, and they'll be touching the G spot. So the G spot is in the first two to three inches of the vagina. So as long as his penis is at least three inches, you can get some satisfaction. He just has to know how to work it properly. Now, nine and a half inches, the comparison is just, well, you say your current man is eight and a half. Uh, that's not a huge difference. Like you can do a lot of work with eight and a half inches. So let's go back to my handy dandy tape measure. This is eight and a half inches. This is plenty. Look, you're good on eight and a half inches. You're just being extra greedy. But not, not only that, you have to be like hella relaxed to be able to take on a regular basis nine and a half inches and eight and a half inches is pretty you know that's a, that's pretty sizable as well you could be comfortable um i'm not sure <laughs> he can't grow a penis he just can't um it's just like you have to be comfortable at because you can't tell him you know your penis is too small and as a matter of fact with eight and a half inches that's not small um so i'm gonna cut to the chase <laughs> You'll be fine. Be grateful for the eight and a half. <laughs> Here's the thing, Tony. If it's even eight and a half, but Kelly's be thrown off. Male and female is like, I don't know what it is. And, and I'm just, I think for me, I'm just more surprised that she's damn near 40 and she's talking like that. Oh, yes. I think that's what did it for me. Kelly is 38. Damn near 40. But you know what, Tony? I blame the schools. <laughs> I blame our schools, and I'm going to tell you why. Because they don't teach the metric system. And here's the deal. I have a, a tape measure here. I used to, like, body build, so I was, like, I would measure, you know, my arms. Look, you will watch. You will watch Coach Tony and the Chris David show. You will watch for anything. So, oh, and you will buy from bkparties.com <laughs> forward slash 6109. <laughs> But look, look at this. So eight and a half inches is about, I don't know if you can see, maybe I need to flip it around. That's like 20, 21 and a half centimeters. You see the centimeter mark right there? So it's 21 and a half centimeters. That's a mouthful. In more ways than one, that's a mouthful. I mean, hold on, Tony. I got to show everybody something big and black. This is 12 inches. This right here, this record. This is, what is this record? I'm burning up. Okay. So, well over 30 centimeters. All right. So, if I go to eight and a half, because I got all kinds of tape measures and stuff too, because I came prepared for the coach. Look at where this comes to on the record. And this may not even be the best. So, this is another record right here. All right. Look at where this comes to on this record. Like, I mean, this is covering Maxwell's head. Like, look at this. You know what it reminds me of? I saw this strip show years ago and they were measuring the strippers with like one of these tape measures. And so the girl goes, like she measures the stripper literally from like his, the top of his navel to his kneecaps, okay? Uh -huh. And the hostess is like, he got 20 inches in his gloves. <laughs> he don't, like, where you <laughs> Right. I don't know, but, but Kelly, I, Kelly, listen, I really hope you're not serious, but if you are, you need to break up with him because you don't like him. Like, I mean, like, Tony, why, why these people be with somebody who they're not happy with? I mean, and, and, and she said she likes that full feeling, but I mean, here's my question for you, Kelly. Is he at least satisfied? Because full isn't the only sensation sexually. I mean, in, in sex, if you didn't learn anything from the last video with Coach Tony, because I learned a lot personally, orgasms are in your mind, you know? It's a mental, physical connection. But anyway, Kelly, um, write us back. I mean, Tony... We have more of 2023 behind us 
than we do in front of us. And I can't get over people still weaponizing things about people that they can't change. I mean, first it's anonymous, um, the, the guy she's messing with from her job talking about her vagina color. And now it's Kelly talking about her man's penis size. An average size for an erect penis is 5.17 inches. So 5.17. Right. I mean, but look, it's the same size as my face. No kidding. <laughs> Eight and a half is a nice situation. So Kelly, you know, not a lot of women. There are women who, you know, are not working with that with their partners. Our next question comes from Anonymous. And he's 18. He's from Pennsylvania. He's from PA. Uh, hello, the Chris David Show and sex coach Tony. I'm just starting college and a virgin. I just want to wait and do it with my girl or someone I'm serious with, but everyone's pressuring me to do it. Even my family, like my brothers and my dad and my uncles. I lie and say I did it already, but when they ask me questions, they call my bluff every time. My older brother said he can still smell the virgin on me. Should I just go with it? With, should I just go do it with anyone who's willing to give it up or do I wait? Tony, before you, you go, I really want to deck these dudes this week. <laughs> Tony, what the hell? <laughs> Take it away. Okay, so Anonymous, listen to me and listen to me good. Um, don't ever let anybody pressure you into losing your virginity on their terms. So, you know, losing your virginity is a monumental moment in everybody's life and regretting it. Or, you know, the way it happened is probably one of the worst things that can ever happen. So don't do it to satisfy someone else. And if that means you got to flip over a table during Sunday dinner when you come home to visit or, you know, whatever, then do that. Um, or you can choose to have a conversation with your dad, like a serious conversation with your dad only and not include your brothers in that conversation. Or you can even enlist your mom. You know, I don't know if your, your parents are together. But if your parents are together, that would be the ideal situation to even enlist your mother for backup in the conversation, or at least have a conversation with her and keep her updated on what it is that's happening. And maybe she can go ahead and have a conversation with your dad. That's if your parents are still together. Um, but at the end of the day, no parents should ever be pressuring their child into having sex on their terms when they want it to happen. Um, you will never get that moment back. And sometimes, you know, we have a nice story to share when we've lost our virginity. And sometimes that story is not so nice. And trust me, when it's not the best circumstances or the way that, you know, it happened in a way that you're proud of, um, it lives with you. It lives with you for the rest of your life. And even though it's something that you might forget, everybody always thinks about the first time they had sex. So, you know, don't do it because you're trying to appease somebody else. Do it because you met the right person and you want to share that moment with her. Honestly, Anonymous, just wait. Trust, trust me on this one. Wait. And no offense, no offense, but the men in your family sound toxic as hell. Like it's giving lack of impulse control, like, you know, just many by many. Losing your virginity is not the achievement flex they think it is, but good for you so far for not feeding into the toxicity. I mean, Tony, his brother said he could smell the virgin oil. You know, like, I mean, do you, does your brother snort coke saying shit like that? Like, it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. He needs an ENT or something. I mean, are they going to pay for, for abortions, diapers, antibiotics? And I mean, that's the team stuff. Again, anonymous, wait. Don't hop into bed with just anyone. Make it a night to remember. Don't, com don't compromise your comfort for a bunch of low lives. Go look at, you know, some porn or something. Just stay away from the AI porn. That, um, <laughs> We're not going to show on here. But you know something else, Tony, too? Um, I mentioned, you know, having babies and stuff, you know, paying for diapers. Daycare is expensive. Okay. Because one of my coworkers, she's paying like 600 a week for a three-year-old. And it's not even like one of the fancy daycares. It's, it's, it's highway robbery. Like, it's just, it's crazy. But anyway, this next one is a uh, follow-up from Rachel from Arizona, who was married and hadn't had an orgasm. Now, she was considering following her girlfriend's lead and getting her masseur to give her one. Now, Rachel writes, Hello, Mr. David and Mrs. Antoine. This is Rachel writing back. I saw the episode, and it was impactful. Thank you. You're an insightful and dynamic team. 
I mean, we are Mars and Venus on this. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm more like Pluto because you know I'm with the shits. <laughs> but thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Um, me and my dear husband, designated hitter, <laughs> touched <laughs> together and we wanted, and, and we had a very heartfelt discussion pertaining to my orgasm status. He apologized profusely and said that he would work on helping me achieve an orgasm. We purchased a few of your toys from your store, and I'm happy to say that I'm not only an orgasm achiever, but I'm also a, me a member of the exclusive Mile High Club. Tony, she put Mile High Club in caps. <laughs> My husband and I have taken a liking to exploring our sexuality, both indoors and outdoors, and I couldn't be happier. I know what you want to ask. Yes, we are being safe. No one has caught us yet. If you recall, I mentioned my soror who was having sex with her masseur. I made the mistake of telling her about my and my dear husband's newfound sexual escapades and she enviously ghosted me. Good riddance to bad rubbish. One thing that isn't bad rubbish is soul snatcher. She put that in caps too. <laughs> Thank you for telling me what to do in my time of need because I was really considering separation. Wow. Sincerely, Rachel S. from Arizona. Rachel, Tony, Rachel is an assertive letter writer, isn't she? Yes. <laughs> I, love, I love that. But what do you think of uh, Rachel's new freak bodyism, Tony? I love it. So it's good to, <laughs> very good to hear the update, Rachel. Um, yes, don't be afraid to try new things. It seems like you all like really, really had a conversation and made it impactful. And, you know, and, and a lot of times it's communication. That's all it requires. It's just to communicate and let your partner know what it is that you need, what's missing. So I'm really great to hear it. I like this stuff. Yeah. And, and communication is key, as we always say. You know, you have to talk it out. And and Rachel, I'm, we're glad that you took Coach Tony's advice. And I'm sure you're glad that you opted not to throw off your pH by fooling around with the IG masseur. Right. But here's the thing, though, Tony. I can't believe that she actually considered separation. I, I mean, know. because she would have had the same issues with somebody else. You know what I mean? Like I said to Kelly earlier, it's all in your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, people need to think of their sexual partners like they think of porn. Like when someone watches porn, they go for a specific niche because anything outside of that niche is not going to get them off. Like it works the same way, you know, off screen. Stop worrying about what your mama or your daddy or baby daddy got to say. Like they're not in your head and they're not in your bed. Mm -hmm. Don't compromise your comfort. Your comfort comes first. So um, anyway, Rachel, be careful doing things out there in public. We don't need you or your husband on the sex offenders registries. <laughs> so be smart. But I told you, I can't get over how she put Mile High Club and okay, Soul Snatcher in caps. <laughs> but congratulations, Rachel. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, like what? Just make sure, listen, Rachel, just make sure you wipe down and you lock those airplane doors. All right, if you know, you know. And okay, anonymous. Uh, we have up next. She's thirty, and she's from Minnesota. She says, um, "I've been dating this guy I met off of a dating app for seven months now. When I ask him what he thinks about us, he doesn't give me any clear answers. I ask my friends what they think is going on with him, and they say he probably isn't big on relationships. I like him, and I want to be his girl. How long does it take for a man to know if he really wants to be with you?" So for me, um, of course, I'm no man, so I have to enlist the advice of my husband for this one. So I'm going to read <laughs> his response. And shout out, to, shout out to Tony's husband. So he says, it's not how long it takes to know if someone wants to be with you, but more when the guy realizes that she turns him on in ways beyond her looks. When he's attracted to things like how she walks, her beauty, her demeanor, just, you know, the way she does little things, like if she touches herself, he's attracted to that. Um, her smell when she's coming and going, how she talks. So it's not, there. basically he's saying there's no set time on 
when he's going to be uh, attracted to you. Um, so, you know, based on just that response, Anonymous, what I would say is, you know, I do agree with your friends. He's just not that into you um, because seven months is absolutely insane for a guy to you know, not be able to give you a clear response on where you are. Um, there are people who, hell, there are people who have gotten married after seven months, you know. So to be with a person who, um, you know, can't even give you specifics on where he is or how he feels in the relationship, um, that's definitely a red flag. So I would say it's time to bless and release. Because you're 30, these are your pretty years. These are your baby-making years. So you want to be with someone who, and it sounds like you want to be in a relationship. And ultimately, you know, when we're in our 30s, our relationships are not just, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, those types of relationships. So if you're 30 and you're with someone who still can't, you know, even communicate to give you a clear response on what it is that he wants from you, um, I definitely am an advocate of blessing and releasing. I like that. Bless and release <laughs> yes. you know tony i have a whole list of quotes from you <laughs> and we're putting quotes in the video right now but i have a whole list of quotes from you that you know people are looking at but you know i did this question um on the men's panel and um my my guy joey said you know his mother has this thing she says and it's called boyfriend light or girlfriend light meaning you're getting all the benefits, but there's no title, you know? And like I said on the panel, and I, Anonymous, I do apologize because I was a bit harsh when I said it, when I responded to you. Um, but as a man of a certain age, I'm going to say something similar to what Coach Tony just said. Leave him alone. Find someone who wants exactly what you want. When you like someone, make sure they like you. And don't invest in anyone who doesn't give you interest. And I mean, you know, the other thing is, too, you might want to consider meeting somebody off of a dating app. You know, like maybe hang out with your friends, you know, and your family, do activities where, you know, you have to be social and engaged. Like Joey said he met his girlfriend, Tony, at a uh, one of those chicken wing festivals that they have, like a food festival. I, know. I mean, and, they, and they've been together five years. You should see them, Tony. You'll see. You, you, you gotta you, um, if you go back, you'll see them. Um, they look like a, a, a UPN sitcom couple. <laughs> like they, they're perfect for each other. But I mean, you know, go out and do stuff. When you go and you do stuff and you engage and you're having fun, that's when you meet people because you're doing things that you like and they're doing the same things that that they like that happen to be what you like. You have that in common. So I mean. Even ask a friend, you know, who, um, you know, know someone, if they know someone good, who they think you might be interested in. But I do really, really hope that you find, you know, what you want and what you deserve. And thank you for writing in. And I mean, I can't really keep this in the video, but I, I want to say too, get you a friend who watches the news and she might see someone on the news who looks like someone <laughs> both of you know. And you just work it all out on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> That's it. But wait, Tony, I got to tell you this story. Now, I'm definitely not leaving this in the video. You know Paula wanted to fix me up. You got to come over to the Starbucks. We'll have lunch or something. But you have to come at a certain time because I know you'd be perfect for each other. But we could never, like, coordinate a time for me to, like, come to the city and be at the Starbucks uh -huh. at that time that she took her break. But anyway, shout out <laughs> to Paula. Shout Thank out to Paula. Her. <laughs> Goodness, Paula. Right. So our next one, our next one comes from Casey. Casey's 21 and she's from Jersey. Hi, Chris and Tony. My name is Casey, and I found out about your show on Instagram. Thank you for watching, Casey. Um, hopefully you see this before it's too late. I have a boyfriend of five years named Anthony. And Tony, wait a minute. Casey and Anthony, it's like Casey Anthony. <laughs> Remember the top mom? Yes, I do. All right, all right I'm going to stop. That was horrible. I'm going to put $20 in the cuss jar just for that. You know I didn't cuss. Anyway, he's perfect. The only thing is I catch him liking the baddie girls on IG. All of them have a certain look and a body type that I don't have. And even though, even though he won't never say, yikes, Casey won't never say. Okay. 
I know he wants a girl with a BBL and I have been going to different doctors here and down south for consultations. I just did one on virtual for a surgeon in the Dominican Republic. I really don't have the money to do it, so I'm going to do care credit. I know I should be with someone who loves my little booty, but I want him to be satisfied. Please help, Casey. Okay, so hi, Casey. Um, I'm going to give you a response, but somehow I think you're going to do what you want to do anyway. But the first thing I'd say is, you know, obviously he wants to be with you if, you know, you two have been together for five years. So um, I think in all of your research, you missed one major step. And that was just basically communicating with your man. Um, you know, I would ask him how he feels about your body. And any man that's really going to care for you and does love you, I'm sure, you know, after five years, he does love you. Um, he's going to want, you know, the best for you. And he's going to, you know, want you for the body that you do have. Now, one thing, I do notice that you're 21. So <laughs> once upon a time, I was 21 with a little movie. Um, now I got a little wagon that I'm dragging. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it hurts my lower back, okay? <laughs> so you will grow into your body. That's what I'll say. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you, Casey. Um, I would side-eye the hell out of a doctor who would operate on a 21-year-old, um, simply because your body is not finished growing. I mean, your body hasn't even really started growing into a woman. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, as far as, you know, your boyfriend, intimacy has nothing to do with, you know, the size of your body. So if your main concern is, you know, him being satisfied, then who's to say he's not satisfied? Like he's with you when he's been, been with you for a while now. Um, men are visual creatures. They absolutely are. So I'm not going to take that away from him. And the fact that he's just on Instagram, like he picks some people have like issues with that. He's simply liking pics. Now, if he's like reaching out to people, that's one thing, but he's just liking pictures. And, and I don't fault that. Like I said, men are very visual creatures, but that's in no way saying or, you know, even assuming that he could even handle a big booty. Um, you're 21. You didn't let us know how old your partner was. So I'm just going to say if he's under the age of 27, he might not even be ready for all that. I'm going to be completely honest. Do not get the surgery. Um, I'm sure you're going to grow into your body. Um, you just have to be patient. Um, I, I mean, I would really, really love Chris to know how old the boyfriend is. Because if he's something like 21 or 22, he's, he's not ready. You know, like mentally, guys are just, <clears throat> you know, look they take a, a little bit longer to mature than women. Um, but to be 21 years old and thinking about altering your body for, you know, a guy. So you've been together for five years. So you've been together since you were 16 years old. So he likely is your first boyfriend. Don't do it, Casey. Don't do that. Something like that for your first boyfriend. And not only that, you're going to put it on care credit. So you're affecting your credits for a big booty. At 21 years old, it's going to take you a minute to pay that off. You're not in your career yet, more than likely. So you never know what's going to happen with your employment situation. When we're 21, we're in that age range. We're not thinking career. We're thinking, hey, somebody pissed me off today. Let me start looking for a new job. Or not even let me start looking for a new job. Let me quit. So now you're affecting your credit all because your boyfriend wanted a big booty. So I would say don't do it. Please don't do it. Um, I know that you've done your research. And I know for me personally, once I started researching it and I get it in my head, then really I want to do it and I'm going to do it. But I really, you know, hope that you do take this advice and don't do it. So while you were talking, Tony, um, excuse me, I was looking up, you know, the typical price for a BBL. Um, stateside and then in the Dominican Republic and typically stateside they can run um, upwards of twenty twenty five thousand uh, dollars um, in the Dominican Republic they're significantly less but you think about it you know you're compromising your health you know they may not have the same they don't have the same medical standards as, as we have here in the United States and you know um, it's only one of our friends to the show works at a hospital and it's it's a hospital in the states but it's where uh it's it's in a hub city 
And a lot of the girls come through, you know, in wheelchairs and they've had those surgeries in VR. And they said that the girls come back all discombobulated. Like one of them came back damn near blind mm. because she had a seizure on the operating table. And then the women in these, because they, they don't stay at the hospital to recover like you would in the United States, they go to recovery houses. And, one, and the women, you know, abuse them in these recovery houses. Like they, you know, they take their passports from them. They beat them. Like it's cataclysmic, honestly. Like it's, it's, it's really crazy. But, but anyway, Casey, I'm going to tell you, like I told Anonymous, if he doesn't love you the way you are, he doesn't love you. Don't compromise your comfort. You're 21. Save your money. Like you have your whole life. Like Coach Tony said. You have your whole life to get a fatty. I mean, shit, tell him to get a BBL. I mean, tell him you only like wide receivers and quarterbacks. Like, I mean, how about this? How about you start, you go on your, your IG and you start liking Jalen Hurts and, and DK Metcalf's picks. You know what I mean? What's good for the goose is good for Gander. I'm just saying. And Casey, I, I really hope to God, I'm going to lean in on this one. I really hope that that doctor who you did the virtual consult with, I hope their last name doesn't begin with a C or a Y. Because Tony, there's a doctor in DR, and his slogan is, if you survive, you'll be snatched. What? Wow. And the girls are still going. But you know what? I'll say this to you, Casey. Work on BBLing your personality. Like, get hobbies. Become a well-rounded young woman and take breaks from social media. Breaks are healthy. And you know what? Um, social media was fun, Tony, because we used to be on Instagram back in the day all the time. Like, I used to love your pictures. Mm -hmm. And then it's like gradually over the years, I stopped seeing your pictures and I started seeing like all this foolishness. Right. And I'm like, well, where's my friend stuff? Like my friend goes out and she takes all these beautiful pictures of like, you know, flowers and plants and animals and Paris and Montreal and shit. And I'm like, well, what happened to that? Right. You know, it's just, I just mass unfollowed like a whole bunch of accounts. Like it's the ads. Like I, I tell you, Tony, make everything evil when they want to make money off of stuff. And, and like I said on the last show, the solar flares just can't come soon enough. <laughs> but anyway, Tony, this one is from Steve. Um, so Steve says, I'm trying to get my new lady into a fetish that I have for doing it out in the open. I like fooling around in the park, on the bus, and, and the train, in Ubers and taxis, even at the movies. See, me and my last chick used to get it in all over the place, up in the dressing room at Macy's, and Steve, like I told you before, you better not be on Fulton Street with that shit. Take that mess to King's Plaza. I'm sorry, Tony. In the restaurant booth, just anywhere we got the urge. I need some tips on getting my new lady to be more of a freak body, as you say. Please help. Peace, Steve. And by the way, Steve is 40 and he's from New York. So this one... This one, you know, I try to be very neutral and, you know, everything for me is a judgment-free zone. That's my responsibility to be judgment-free. But Steve, come on now. Um, so I would say if your current partner is more conservative, you can't expect her to go from zero to 100 just like that. Um, you know, especially because your last partner was like that. So that's, you know, number one, don't compare her to your last partner. Um, that's extremely unfair to your new lady. Um, but, you know, I was wondering, have you communicated to her what you like? So I don't know. He didn't mention how long they've been together. I think he just said his new lady. Um, but you know how when you're in the talking stage and you kind of, you know, by that third or fourth conversation, you're talking about, okay, what's your favorite sexual position or things like that? Like, did you have a conversation, Steve, that you like it, like, really, really freaky, um, that you like doing it outdoors? It's almost a requirement for you to be satisfied. Like, did you have that communication? Um, so I think that is something that if you didn't have the conversation about, you might want to have it sooner rather than later. Um, if you did have a conversation, you know, I'm curious to know, like, how receptive she was. If it, you know, if it's not her thing, then 
you know, that technically Steve is still on you because you pursued her. Um, but more importantly, to answer your question. Um, so first thing, I would at least start with a level three. Because you're at 100. You're expecting her to be at 100 already, Steve. Um, so start at level three at least. Go to the movies. Um, start off touching each other to see where that goes. Um, what I will say is don't go to the movies with a sole purpose of wanting to get busy in the theater. Because it's going to come off as you just using her to get your rocks off. So I don't want it to be a situation where you're just trying to, any woman that you be with, you're trying to just go places to have sex and you're not investing in the relationship. So do things like that. Make her feel comfortable. That's the most important thing because you can't expect somebody to be out in the middle of the park giving you head and she's not comfortable and feeling like she's in a safe space. So I think, Steve, you know, I don't know how it, uh, initiated with a previous person that you were with, that she was already on 100 when you met her. But with this new person, don't compare her to your first uh, relationship. You have to start from square one, make sure the communication is open and make sure she is in a safe and trusting space. I think that's the most important thing, but definitely have that communication with her. But don't expect her to like, you know, hop on a flight and give you head next to the lady who's in the third seat. Like that's a little bit unrealistic. So just, I don't want to say lower your um, expectations, but I will say just be realistic. Yeah. You, know, Steve, you have to like, like um, um, our men's panel, you know, we talked about this one and you know, you have to ease people into kinks. You can't just expect yeah. it to just, be ready to just dive right into something that you've been doing a long time. Like you have to communicate. You have to, you know, kind of warm them up to that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Steve, my thing is this, don't get caught. You and your lady could end up on a sex offender registry. So chill out. And you know what, Steve, um, like I told you in the other video, be assertive and effective. Because assertive and effective communication is key. Be direct. And Tony, it's, I don't know. There's a lot of exhibitionism these days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe it's the stock market or something. I don't know. So next we have uh, Anonymous from Ohio. And she writes, my husband has ED, also known as erectile dysfunction. He tried those mints they sell on television called HIMS, but it's not working for him. Do you have any suggestions? We have been together 27 years and we have two kids and five grandkids. I love him dearly and I want him to get it up so we can do like we used to do back in the day before the kids. Um, she sounds like a fun lady, Tony. <laughs> Seriously. And, yes. and see, guys, this is what you, you guys should you know, aspire for. You know, 27 years they've been together. Um, but Tony, what should Anonymous do? Yes. So hi, Anonymous. So firstly, congratulations on 27 years of marriage, because that is amazing. Um, so erectile dysfunction, it involves abnormalities in the penile arteries, um, the veins or both. And this is especially in older men. So when the problem is arterial, it's usually caused by something called arterial sclerosis or hardening of the of the arteries, um, although trauma in the arteries can be caused. Um, so first things first, I was suggesting a doctor just to further assess why your husband is experiencing ED. So, you know, by just taking a mint, um, you know, that you got or you saw on TV is definitely not going to treat the underlying cause. So that is the most important thing is you definitely all, always want to see a doctor because it can be due to a number of things. It could be smoking, being overweight, um, a medical condition, alcohol or drug use. Um, and sometimes it's just not being physically active. You know, and I know like since the pandemic started, a lot of our lifestyles have changed. So for me, you know, I've been working from home for three years. So this is like literally the laziest I've ever been in my life. Um, so it's just a number of things. A lot of people have become physically inactive and not because of laziness, just because of circumstances. So before starting something like that, um, you know, definitely make some lifestyle changes and then, you know, see if that could help. But that's after speaking to a doctor. Um, as far as the intimacy front goes, um, I would suggest things like sensual massages, um, using cock rings. So just um. 
I have visuals for this question. So as Ooh, far nice. as cock rings go, um, what a cock ring does it is, is it prolongs ejaculation. So this one here, this is actually a couple's toy. So hopefully you can see it, right? This is called R&B, like rhythm and blues, R&B. Um, so the way this works as far as the cock ring goes, you're going to have a little bit of lube here and slide it onto the base of the penis. And then what it does is it's going to prolong ejaculation. So if you do have instances where he is able to get an erection, definitely consider using a cock ring. Um, we don't sell them where it's just the ring, um, you know, that you can just quickly throw on. But this one, like I said, it's a couple's one. So while this is on the penis... Um, there's a little button here because this is a bullet and these will hit, these little bunny ears will hit the clitoris. So as you're thrusting, you're both feeling a slight sensation, but the more important thing is it's prolonging ejaculation for him. So you get a two for one on this one because if you don't want to use it with a penis, like you and your partner can have um, foreplay, he can use this on you. So this is our version of a bullet. OK, and it is USB chargeable. And so you're going to hold there's a little button right here. You're going to hold that button down for about four seconds and it's vibrating. So your husband can, you know, rub this on your clitoris while giving massage. He can rub this on the nipples. So that's where that intimacy and essential massages come in. This has uh, multiple speeds. So you can do something like that. Um, we have another one, which is pretty much the exact same concept. And this one is called Rise and Shine. So if you feel like mm, um, this one might be a little too small or it's stripping, it does actually stretch. Um, Rise and Shine is a little more stretchy. So I'm going to pull out our friend again, right? So um, this goes, like I said, the base of the penis all the way down here. So once this is squeezed, it helps to prolong ejaculation. Right. And like I said, it helps to put lube on it just so that it doesn't pull hairs or make him uncomfortable. OK, um, so I would suggest something like that. You know, if he does experience his moments where he is able to get in or experience an erection. Um, you know, like I said, it's going to help prolong the ejaculation. We also have a spray. It's called stamina. And stamina is a prolonging spray. So you you know, put this on the penis and it prolongs the ejaculation. So that's something that I would consider as well. Um, also, as far as like the foreplay front, we have these cards. So we have a lot of things for not necessarily intercourse, but we have foreplay things as well. So this um, game, it's a card game. It's called Delicious Encounters. And it's basically um, like oral sex game. So it has, uh, let's see... It's, of course, um, 50 different foreplay and oral sex positions. Um, it contains 25 oral sex cards for him and 25 for her. Um, so you can, you know, use these, something like these, and, you know, continue with intimacy and, you know, keeping it fresh like you did before the kids. Um, also, I wanted to talk about foods as well. And for this, I did a little research. So I want to read a couple of things. Um, there are foods that would also help. Um, you know, uh, so this is basically nine foods that can help uh, keep a stronger erection or help sustain an erection. Um, this is from the men's, from the Proactive Men's Medical Center. They're actually based in Cincinnati, Ohio. And so the first one being watermelon, um, it's good for a good erection because it dilates and relaxes blood vessels, making it easier for blood flow to the penis. So the next one is spinach and other leafy greens. And spinach is high in nitric acid and therefore like other hard, ere like other hard erection foods helps arteries expand and fill up with blood. Next one is coffee. Um, so coffee is good for penis growth. I'm not quoting that, but I'm just reading from this um, article here. But basically, because coffee has caffeine in it, caffeine is an effective penis food because it relaxes uh, the smooth muscles of the penis, paving the way for blood to fill up. 
Next, we have dark chocolate. So, you know, dark chocolate is a top food for strong erection because it's packed with flavanols, which make it easier for blood flow through the body. Um, however, because dark chocolate is also uh, often high in sugar and fat, eating too much can help gain weight. So remember earlier when I mentioned that um, one of the causes could be because of you know, overweight. So you just, you know, might want to be a little mindful when it comes to dark chocolate. Um, an ounce of dark chocolate has 155 calories um, and nine grams of fat. So just, you might not be the healthiest of foods to choose from when helping, you know, consider an erection. Next is salmon. Everybody loves salmon. Um, salmon is one of the best foods to help get erect because it's rich in vitamin D. And vitamin D has been shown to help prevent endothelial dysfunction, which is when your arteries, blood vessels, and organs aren't able to properly circulate blood. Next, we have pistachios. So pistachios are packed with something called arginine. The arginine encourages the production of nitric acid, which in turn help regulate blood flow to the penis and other parts of the body. Uh, we also have almonds, walnuts, and other nuts because they are rich in high density lipoprotein. Next is orange and blueberries. So although oranges and blueberries seem to have little in common with dark chocolate, they share one important trait, which is the flavonoids. So this makes them one of the best foods for erectile dysfunction. Uh, flavonoids encourage the blood flow, which allows the penis to become engorged after it's stimulated. And then the last one, number nine, is spicy hot foods. So thanks to capsaicin, which is found in hot peppers, a little hot sauce or a little habanero on the side may help with getting an erection. Um, so like I said, this was, um, you know, I did a little bit of research. This was something, uh, an article from the Proactive Men's Medical Center. Um, but then, you know, lastly, um, Overall, it's just still important to keep intimacy, you know, even if it doesn't involve penetration. So, um, you know, touching, massaging, you know, that's a great route to experiencing um, intimacy when you're, you know, when erectile dysfunction is involved. And also one thing that I would say is just important to talk to your husband so that he doesn't feel pressured to get an erection. Because if you don't have that conversation with him, every time you go to massage him or just touch his body, he might think, okay, she's wanting this to result in penetration. And it might just be you wanting that intimacy, intimacy aspect of it. So just assure, you know, assure him tonight is just a couple's massage night, you know, or tonight might be a night that we play this oral sex game or something like that, but have a conversation. But more importantly, um, I highly recommend um, and encourage him to see a doctor just to determine what the underlying causes of his ED. What I do want to suggest though he, do, he does is get his uh, testosterone checked out. Um, also, uh, estradiol and, and uh, SHBG. Uh, it's called sex hormone binding, sex hormone binding globulin. He can do all of that in an endocrinologist or at a men's wellness clinic. And once the labs come back, you know, the doctor may suggest TRT, um, testosterone replacement therapy, or something lighter like Cialis or Viagra. I mean, there are even studies out on this drug called teremaphine, and it's a cancer drug, but they show that um, they, people get improvement, you know, with testosterone production when they take it in certain doses. But however, I am not a medical professional, so please consult with, you know, an endocrinologist or urologist or your primary and write us back and let us know how everything goes. And congratulations on making 27 years of marriage. And, and also, you know what, because you know it's only, you know I'm nosy. I wanna, we want to know how you, how you two met, you know, all those years ago. Um, but Tony, next up we have Sheeta. And Sheeta's uh, 35 and she's from Philly. So Sheeta says, hi, Chris, David, and Coach Tony. I have a problem orgasming without having the music on. And my husband absolutely hates it. What can I do? Okay, so hi, Sheeta. <laughs> um, so at first I was wondering, 
what is the root cause of not being able to orgasm without the music playing? And without knowing that, my first instinct was to just suggest speaking with a therapist. Um, but what I will say is, as far as working you know, with your husband, you both have to get on the same page. So I don't think that music is the worst thing in the world, but sometimes a little spontaneity goes a long way without having to get up and set up a playlist and, you know, things like that. Um, so in the meantime, maybe you both can compromise, start off with turning the music down a little bit lower. So I don't know if his gripe is, is the music blasting. Maybe you can turn the music down, you know, and then the next time make it go lower and then a little bit lower. And then just keep trying until you can both get on, you know, a meeting ground, but also I would definitely recommend that you meet him in the middle and periodically um, practice doing it with the music off, you know, and if that means you got to switch it up and introduce a couple's toy just to, you know, give you some added distraction to help you to, to orgasm, then, you know, go for it. Um, but you're not going to have a situation where 100% of the time you're going to have to be able to get up and get music on. That's very unrealistic. But meet your husband in the middle. You know, if he has an issue with the music, obviously there's a reason why you both need to talk about it. Um, and here we go with the communication, you know, thing again. Like a lot of these is, uh, instances can be resolved or handled if you both communicated like why you need music and why he hates the music. Is it the type of music? Like, are you rocking heavy metal while you two are, you know, getting busy? Um, so I would just say... Start by practicing to lower the music a little bit lower, a little bit lower until it's very low and potentially off. But then in the meantime, you also have to give him a bone and turn it off sometimes and see, you know, how you two can work and kind of meet on a, on a middle ground. And you know, Tony, um, I wonder if it's the radio because the radio can be jarring. Mm -hmm. You know, with all of the ads and the differences in, in like, um, audio processing. I don't know. I'm a nerd when it comes to stuff like that. But I wonder if that's what it is. Another thing I was thinking, maybe you two can cultivate your own playlist of, like, your wedding song, provided you all had a reception and things like that. Or, you know, the song that, you know, you two really like. But just work together to, to cultivate a playlist that belongs to just you two. Um, and maybe something like that would help. But in the meantime, I would still suggest, you know, trying to work with your husband and switching it up a bit and trying it without the music and maybe adding something else to enhance that experience. Um, Sheeta, and also other people who've written, um, write us back. And if you're, you know, a new person writing us, um, let us know your marital status. Um, let us know how long you've been with your partner or whoever you're with. Um, and that's, you know, just really it. That's what we want to know because that helps us with, you know, answering these questions for you all. Tony, we have this new segment on the show. It's called It's Giving. And I don't know, like, she is just giving serial killer with the radio turned all the way up. <laughs> Like, I mean, Sheeta, do you sleep with it on too? Like, I'm just joking, Sheeta. Sheeta, I'm, I'm just, you know me, you know I joke. But write us back. And everyone write us back, okay? Um, Tony, do we have time for a few more? Yes, we do. <laughs> All right, okay. So this next one comes from Will. Will's 56 and he's from California. Will says, I have an active lifestyle, so I play often. Recently, I've been taking this new medication and I noticed that it takes me too long to ejaculate. I have spoken with my physician about it, and he says it should wear off with time. Can I do anything in the meantime? Thanks, Will. Yeah, so with this one, um, first of all, hi, Will. Um, I don't know if that's the only uh, advice that your doctor gave you, or if, you know, he gave you additional feedback, and this is like the condensed version of what you're trying to relate to us. Um, but if that's the only thing he said, then I would definitely try to seek an opinion from another physician. Now, delayed ejaculation, it does depend on a number of things. In this case, you gave us the reason, which is your new medication. So, um, and then just in my research, what I noticed is that a lot of medications that were on the list of reasons for delayed uh, ejacul ejaculation 
are potentially medications that you would have to likely be on for the long term. So I'm not sure if that's your situation um, and that's your business. Um, and so, of course, I'm not a medical doctor, but I would suggest that you talk to your doctor about maybe revisiting the dosage to see if that could maybe help. Um, but delayed ejaculation can be either temporary or a life, uh, lifelong problem. So, you know, one thing that I that stuck out to me was that the complications or one of the complications can be diminished sexual pleasure. Um, so I would just recommend going back to your doctor simply because, and unfortunately, I don't have a lot of information to give you on this, simply because I feel like it's the responsibility is partly in your doctor's hand instead of saying, oh, it's going to wear off over time. Because what does that mean? What is over time? Is that in two weeks, two months, nine months? Like you want to be comfortable um, when you're experiencing intimacy and you don't want, of course, your um, sexual pleasure to diminish over it. Um, so I would say talk again to your doctor. And if your doctor isn't receptive to that, then maybe um, consider talking to another doctor. Um, but you just want to get specifics on what it is that you can do. Um, can you reduce the dosage? Is there like another version of that medication that you can take? Um, so that's just something that's important. I feel like I didn't really give like a whole bunch of information. And I, you know, I want to tread lightly simply because I'm not a doctor and this involves your medication. Um, but just in doing my research, you've kind of like pinpointed for us the exact reason why it's happening, which is the medication. So, yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Will, thanks for writing us and, and definitely you know, take Coach Tony's advice, um, check into what I suggested for, you know, Anonymous, who, you know, has been married for 27 years, her, her husband. And you know, Tony, is funny. It's something I noticed about Will and the Anonymous, you know, from 27 years. Mm -hmm. Like, I can tell that they're older by how they space their sentences. Like, I'm thinking, like, when they learned how to type, they probably learned how to type on typewriters. Mm -hmm. Like, me and you did because yeah. you know we we you know we're, we're good and grown we're good and grown yes. um that yeah. was really cool to see you kids missed out and you know what you know what else tony remember you used to have to have the white out handy in case you yeah. made a mistake of course yeah yeah <laughs> yeah see the kids they really missed out like they don't even learn cursive anymore i, I mean they <laughs> listen they barely know how to use a ruler I mean, right <laughs> i mean seriously but tony are you in the mood for one more Yes, let's take one more. Awesome. Okay, so this one comes from Terrence. Terrence is 28 from Philly. Hi, my name is Terrence and I'm 28 years old. I have a foot fetish, but I can't tell my wife because she might leave me. Hold up. Terrence Howard. Remember, <laughs> I, I, no, I just, I had to, I had to, because remember his character in the, in the best man, like the feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> character Clinton. Um, but anyway, take it away, Tony. Um, so I don't see an issue with having a foot fetish unless you're leaving out a significant part of the story. Um, so like, have you done anything that was disrespectful to your wife involving your fetish? Um, are you entertaining other people's feet, you know, that don't belong to your wife? Um, I mean, talk to your wife. She might like it as long as you're giving her feet the attention and not to someone else. Like, I really don't see a problem with that. She might like the added attention to her feet. Um, but I really don't think this is a fetish or something that's worthy of being left for. So um, you could just be panicking, like, oh, my wife might like me because I never told her about this. But um, it's never too late to open up those lines of communication. Just have the conversation. And it's not even a difficult conversation. It really isn't. Um, so just speak to your wife. Um, let her know what it is you like, maybe why you like it, and then just incorporate that into your intimacy. And, you know, Terrence, I hope you and uh, your wife, Shelby, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. But I hope your wife isn't that petty to just leave you over that. I mean, we got men staying with women out here who got pregnant during their marriage. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. I highly doubt that she'll leave you, but I mean, I could be wrong. You know, just like I'm still trying to hold on to faith that Casey isn't going to go run and get a BBL. I but <laughs> I don't know, Tony. I don't know. <laughs> um, so Jamel from last season, he followed up with us. He, uh, he uh, remember, he wanted to get his girlfriend to try uh, anal on him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jamel is 37. He's from Long Island. And he writes, 
me and my girl are black. <laughs> she's a bit, <laughs> okay. She's a little bit younger than me, but we are around the same age. Okay. I got her to do it because you said there are were health benefits. She thought I was lying, but she watched for herself. Well, yes. Yeah. Like, you know, just do your research on prostate massage and, you know, things of that nature. But, you know, Chamel, I'm very glad that you are comfortable enough to have that conversation with your girlfriend. And um, I'm glad that it worked out. Congratulations, Jamel. I mean, I'm glad we were able to open you up to a whole new world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, Coach, I'm a mess. <laughs> I know, I'm, in, I'm, a mess. I'm in trouble. Um, Coach Tony, are there any takeaways from these folks today? The most important thing is always going to be communication. Um, a lot of our questions that we answer or we you know, talk about can be solved by just having open lines of communication with our partners. So that's probably the biggest takeaway today. And I'll probably always, you know, and we all can use improvement on our uh, communication skills. Even me, you know, there's sometimes where I want to like get upset with my husband, but then I'm like, I got to check myself like, wait, you didn't specifically say this, that, and the third, like you didn't communicate needed it now or something like that. So um, communication is always important, keeping those lines of communication open, but just also being self-aware of what it is that you shared, you know, with your partner and the ramifications of not sharing certain things. Absolutely. And yeah, because see, Tony is that Tony's a Leo, everyone, you know, <laughs> you know, they're ready to. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, Tony's a sweetheart. Tony's a sweetheart. But you know, Tony, you know what's crazy? I read this article about this woman, um, and I don't even know if the article was real. It could have been one of those like Watt, Wattpad articles, but she said that she divorced her husband because she found out he won a bet to take her virginity. And oh, I'm like, wow, that's terrible. Yeah, I would divorce too. I wonder how long they were married. I don't even know if it was real because yeah. it was on like this sketchy website you know i read everything you know <laughs> i i you know me i'm a sponge but speaking of bets though i'm willing to bet that casey gets that bbl i hope not i, I really hope she don't i hope she doesn't but i mean she's 21 you know like these these again it's gen z like they're out here just yoloing you know but when i was you know? 21 i was in a relationship this guy, he called me at midnight on my 21st birthday. And we were together for a couple of years and we were even engaged. And I was tiny and he loved me for my little booty. And, you know, <laughs> that's just what it was, you know, like, and then, you know, I don't know how, old, like I said, I don't know how old Casey's boyfriend is, but I'm assuming he's not that much older. He can't handle a BBL, you know, he just likes to look at him, but, you know, and now in this booty I got, I'm on a treadmill every night trying to work it off. <laughs> so. But you know, Tony, it's really hard to lose butt. Like, I know. It's I really know. hard to lose. But yeah. it, booty is one of those things where it's like you either have it or you don't. Yeah. Because you, you can work out, you can do squats and lunges and all of those leg day exercises. And I mean, it's just going to get more muscular, whatever you have. Right. You know, and if you have... It's really not going to get smaller because it's just all in your like structure. Yeah. You know, it's all in how you're built. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> I, and, yeah. Sometimes I walk past the mirror and I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so, Casey, just be patient. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and the other thing is, too, you know, as you age, you know, your body changes. Um, she may decide to have children. Mm -hmm. Her body's really going to change then. Yes. And that's the other thing. Like, don't pay attention to how these, you know, these Hollywood folks have kids, right. you know, and how they snap right back. Because a lot of times they're not having the kid. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll make you think they're having a the kid. But, you know, um, Casey, stay in your lane. Like, that's the best advice I could, I could give her is to just stay in her lane and have that talk with, mm -hmm. with Anthony. Have that talk with him and... and see where his head is. And like I said, too, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Start liking some of these, you know, these these IG fitness, uh, you know, trainers, fit, fitness trainers. Mm -hmm. Start liking some of their picks. Start liking some of these NFL players' picks, some of these ball players' picks. Um, but anyway, this was fun. 
Yes. And we even, guys, we even got a little small, little mini toy buying guide. <laughs> like right in time for the holidays. Yes. You know? And I mean, and, and here's the thing. I have to say this. Because I did make a significant observation. A lot of you all write in and you just start talking at us with no background. And Tony, you know where I'm going with this because I always go back to my husband is gay, please advise. Like, just a little bit of background. Like, don't give us too much. And Star, I'm looking at you. But keep, the <laughs> keep, keep the question short. Like, rule of thumb, I could say, like, three, like, old school, three, four old school Twitter posts. So if you remember, Twitter used to be um, 140 characters. So 140 times three, that's like 420. See, you see that? See what I did? Okay. All right. But Tony, we, I've been on this math kick today, like with all these different <laughs> tools here. Like I've been, oh man, it fell. But I've been on this math kick. I don't know. But anyway, um, listen, Hanif, anonymous with the husband you think is gay. And everyone from our previous Q&A episode, write us back. We did not forget. Yes. Also, because I really want to know, Tony, I, I got to know what the hell that lady watching thinks that. I, like, I need to know what happened with Hanif. Listen, Hanif, um, I'm, I'm at the point where Hanif, where like, and I don't want to do this, where because I have this info. Like, I'm really about to just say, hey, like, what's going on? I don't know, but either way, Hanif, just check in, write us back. Let us know how you're doing, you know, even with therapy. Um, uh, 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 Terrence, who else? Will, Sheeta, Steve, Casey, Kelly, Burr, okay? <laughs> and all the anonymous callers. Tony, I can call them callers, right? I mean, <laughs> it's technically they wrote in, but I mean, we don't have a phone. Like, there's no phone here. I mean, right. Know. I'm not giving my number out. We're not giving out Coach Tony's number. I mean, well, you could get her number. It's online, but just don't bother her unless it's, you know, you want to hire her for something. Um, but anyway, write us back. Let us know how things are going for you. And we're going to be doing more of these in the new year. So get your questions in. Wow. Because Coach Tony is booked. And so am I. And you know what I say every show. So let everyone know how they can get in touch with you, Tony. www.thekittychronicles.co. Uh, it features my blog, a couple of YouTube videos, things like that. From that, you can get to Bedroom Candy, but if you want to get straight to the good stuff, my Bedroom Candy site is www.bkparties.com slash 6109. If you take too long on the site, you'll probably time out of my specific website. So just remember ID 6109. And then also follow me, follow me on Instagram, Bedroom Candy underscore by Tony, T-O-N-I. All right. Um... I know one thing I I'm pulling up my screenshots now because I have stuff that I'm going to order. Um, listen, to anyone we didn't get today, we will get you in the new year. And as always, unless you request otherwise, your questions are anonymous. I think more people this time understood that because we got a lot more anonymous people than we did last time. And you can also use a fake name like that's fine, too. Like Star's name really is Star. Like, I thought she was using a fake name, but no, her, her government is star. So, I, and I love that. So good for her. But, um, Tony, I have to mention your plant in the background because every time we're on, if you guys watch the videos from, see, look at the videos from the past, from, from March of this year and also um, in, in July. Um, every time we're on, that plant gets taller and taller. Mm. Yeah, Unless, yeah. And I'm just trying my hardest to honor this gift. Yes. And alive. <laughs> yes. You know, and it's a money tree. They, they don't need a lot of um, light. You just need to water them once a week. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. there's something in your plant. I don't know what's in that plant, but I'm going to just say this. Whatever's in that plant, we need to send it to Kelly so she can rub it on her man's dick. So it can grow. <laughs> okay. All right, wait, I got to be serious. Be smart out there in those Christmas and New Year's streets. The Chris David Show wishes you a safe and happy holiday season. 
Happy birthday to all of my fellow Capricorns and to everyone. Happy New Year. We'll see you right back here in 2024. Now let's clap it up for our, our sexpert. We can call you the sexpert, right? That's good. <laughs> clap it up for yourselves for listening and watching. Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your kittens, tell your bullies, tell your OBGYN, oh, your yeah. endocrinologist, and your urologist. Tell all the exhibitionists and foot fetishists, tell all the size queens and virgins to follow us on Instagram at Chris David TV and follow our show at the Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. You can also visit ChrisDavidShow.com. There you'll find everything you need to know about the show. Before we go, your comfort comes first. Don't compromise your comfort. You control your orgasms. Don't invest in anyone who doesn't give you interest. If someone doesn't love you the way you are, they don't love you. And you know what else? They didn't stop making dick when they made his. They didn't stop making pussy when they made hers. Okay. They'll be kind. Be well and talk like sex rated XXX. This is Chris David, host of The Chris David Show. Today marks the 35th annual World AIDS Day, a time when we not only reflect on those we've lost, but we look at the progress that's been made in HIV AIDS research. Leroy was an amazing designer and hairstylist. He could take any piece of material and make something fabulous out of it. Leroy was thoughtful and creative, and his laugh would light up a room. Jackie Adams, also known as Bambi, was an activist and one of the kindest souls I've ever encountered. Miss Jackie had an incredible sense of humor and was encouraging and uplifting to anyone she met. She also had a cussing mouth, so we got along very well. One of my earliest memories of my cousin Paul was when he brought me over this big Christmas present. I thought it was something electronic, but it ended up being a collection of classic literature like Treasure Island and The Wind in the Willows. I remember not appreciating it at first, but then our grandmother told me how important it was for her to learn to read as an adult. Thank you, Paul, for encouraging literacy and for always being a kind and supportive cousin. We miss you. Since 2010, new HIV infections have declined by 38%, from 2.1 million to 1.3 million in 2022. Age-related deaths have been reduced by 69% since the peak in 2004 and by 51% since 2010. However, those numbers are still too high and too many people are still being infected. We can do more. Take action, make a difference. Visit the link below unaids.org forward slash yen forward slash take action. It's all about community. When AIDS affects one of us, AIDS affects us all.